Discussion. Let's focus on the threat of ISIS once again. Let's discuss it with Republican Congressman Tom Coley joining us now. Congressman, it's great to see you. Thanks so much. Hey, Kate. Great to see you. Great to see you as well. So there had been, call it a mixed message, call it whatever you want. The president, it seemed unclear earlier this week, was the goal against ISIS to destroy, degrade, contain. We heard just now from Michelle Kaczynski that John Kerry laid out very clearly the goal is to destroy. How do you propose, would they say that, how do you propose that we go about doing that at this point? What do you think, Congressman? Well, I think the, the goal is the appropriate goal. Look, uh, I think uh, the one thing you can say about ISIL, they know how to unite the whole world against them. Uh, even people that don't normally agree with one another are willing to work together in this particular instance. And we should take advantage of that. So, again, I think we uh, probably already know basically the things that we're going to do. We're going to use airstrikes. Uh, when we say no boots on the ground, that doesn't mean no special operators. So I could see instances where they might be dropped in to take out a particular target. I think we're going to obviously train and supply people, and we're going to try and build a regional alliance. And you're seeing elements of that, of that come today, uh, come together today in um, uh, in the NATO summit. But I think you'll see more in the Middle East itself. There are a lot of people on ground, like the Kurds, like the Jordanians, mm -hmm. like the Saudis, uh, that also are very concerned about ISIL, like the Iranians. So I think we can, we can build a coalition that can first contain and then destroy these guys. Let me ask you about the issue of strategy. You have uh, praised the president, or at least said that the president is being commendably cautious in terms of you uh, considering U.S. military action against ISIS in Syria specifically. Senator Susan Collins was on the show earlier to, earlier today speaking to Chris, and she says she criticized the president, saying that it, he is long overdue in coming to Congress and laying out his strategy. What is the senator missing here? Which one is it? Well, I, look, I don't think she's missing anything. I agree with Senator Collins that he is, uh, was slow to react. Uh, this is a president that was calling uh, these guys the junior varsity earlier this year and, frankly, uh, uh, has never acknowledged that he and, and uh, former Prime Minister Maliki probably made a big mistake in not keeping an American presence in Iraq past 2011. Now, again, uh, at this point, I think the, there's two components here. Mm -hmm. We've got pretty much a free hand in Iraq because we're operating with the permission of the Iraqi government. Syria is very different. We have at least a three-sided civil war. The Syrian government is not a government that we support. Uh, we go in there and uh, we run the risk of being shot at not only by ISIL, but potentially by the Syrian government as well. So that, I think the president is right to be careful about Syria. I don't think any American wants to be involved in the Syrian civil war, but uh, at some point we probably are going to have to, in one way or the other, engage ISIL not just in Iraq, but in their home base in Syria. And how, how does the U.S. go about doing that is the big question. I want to get your take on that, but also in the context of your colleague Mike Rogers, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, he wrote an, uh, an opinion piece in Time magazine, in Time, and it said this in part, directly to this part, point of the discussion we're in, uh, Congressman. He says, we need to defeat the ISIS safe haven in Syria, eliminate it on the battlefields in Iraq, and stop its march into the Levant. He goes on to say, to defeat this enemy, we will have to risk Americans who will be operating in the fight. But let's be clear, American lives around the world are presently at risk from ISIS's brutality. Now, we're going to have to risk American lives who, are, who will be operating in the fight. Is he just acknowledging reality that though we're saying no combat boots on the ground, that they're still going to be in harm's way? They're still going to be in the fight. That's absolutely correct. Look, we're risking American lives right now, and Chairman Rogers is right to point that out. Uh, look, w when our people fly combat operations, that's a dangerous thing. We almost lost people in Libya. We had a plane they didn't shoot down, but it conked out, if you will, uh, over Libyan airspace. We had two pilots on the ground. They were within minutes of being captured uh, by the Libyans, and uh, frankly, we were able to extract them. So uh, once you engage in military activity, you're risking American lives. Now, I think, uh, again, we have a 1,000 people on the ground. Uh, they're not in direct combat, but anybody that thinks they're not at risk, I think, is being painfully naive. Uh, and the same thing will be true as we get drawn deeper into this. But you have to weigh, you know, what's the threat? And the threat here with ISIL, as we've seen pretty dramatically, uh, with the brutal murder of two American journalists, is real. And if they're allowed to constitute a safe haven, they will develop the capability over time to strike the United States and kill Americans around the world. So then, Congressman, uh, you know, what this do we ought to do be an about issue that? We can be united on. And then, what do you, what do you propose? What is what do you advocate? What is the best policy in Syria against ISIS at this point? Airstrikes and well, does the, do airstrikes require, in your view, 
congressional approval? Absolutely. Look, I think uh, the president would be very wise uh, to, when Congress comes back, to lay out, this is my objective, this is my strategy, here are the basic things we're going to do. I need congressional authorization to do them. And ask the Congress to vote yes or no. Now, I think he'll win that vote. I think he should win that vote. And it would be a bipartisan victory. But there'll be some opposition, again, from both parties. Fair enough. Uh, but the president runs a big risk if he effectively wages war on his own. That's not only unconstitutional, it's politically unwise. He needs to assemble a domestic coalition that will support uh, military action. And if he fails to do that, we'll get mm -hmm. partway down the road and it'll become a domestic political issue. And, and that can be avoided if the president just deals directly with Congress. Well, and Congressman, then what are you uh, talking about politics? What do you say to your colleagues who might not want to take a tough vote that could follow them later in terms of authorizing further military use, for, force? Hey, they pay you to vote in this business, okay? Uh, and dodging votes is always a mistake. Uh, just tell us what you think. Listen to the evidence. Listen to the debate. Vote in good conscience. The American people accept that. They even accept uh, decisions sometimes that they disagree with if they're arrived at openly and honestly and you explain your position. If you're not willing to do that, you don't need to be in politics and you certainly don't need to be in the United States Congress. Uh, being afraid of votes is being afraid of doing your job. Now, that's an important message I think many of your colleagues need to hear running up to this midterm election. Congressman Tom Cole, it's always great to have you here. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Okay. Michaela? All right, Kate, we want to talk about the showbiz lady, Joan Rivers. She was showbiz through and through.